One of the most needed things in your life is transport. Especially when traveling too far. I cannot walk from Limpopo to Kruonstad. I need transport for my journey. The same applies to network applications. They need some form of transport to reach their destination. Good day. My name is Tarama Makobe and I'm your tutor and the founder of Technology for All Academy, a division of ABAP Supply and ICT Solutions. Our discussions for today will be on transport layer or layer 4 of the OSI model. We have two protocols on the transport layer. Being Transmission Control Protocol or TCP and User Data Given Protocol or UDP. More on those two protocols later today. We also have port numbers at layer 4 or transport link. We have TCP port numbers and UDP port numbers. Both have 65,535 port numbers per IP address or per host. From 0 to 1023, we have well known port numbers or system port numbers. They are used for services which are fundamental to the internet. They cannot be assigned to hosts or clients. From 1024 to 49,151, we have registered port or user port. They are used for proprietary applications and can be assigned to hosts or clients if not in use by proprietary applications. Example of proprietary applications, we have Lotus Nodes, Remote Desktop, and there are many more. Last but not least, from 49,152 to 65,535, we have dynamic ports or private ports. They are assigned dynamically to the host or client for the duration of the session. Here are some of the system ports or well-known ports for both TCP and UDP. We have FTP uses port 20 and port 21. SSH uses port 22. Telnet uses port 23, SMTP make use of port 25, DNS uses port 53, HTTP uses port 80, port 3 uses port 110, IMF4 uses port 143, HTTPS uses port 443. And on the UDP side, we have DNS use port 53, DHCP use port 67, TFTP use port 69, NTP use port 123, SMTP use port 161. More on the services and their port numbers will be discussed on the follow-up video. I will make a video where I will be discussing the port numbers and their services. For now, just know that this uh, which service is using which port. Port numbers are used for communication, not for security. I can compare port numbers to taxis in our real life situation. In almost every place, 
you have to make a sign when getting a text. Where I come from, in rural start. If I want to go to town, I point my finger upward. And if I want to go to Constantia, where I'm staying, I point four fingers. In front or upward, four fingers is Constantia. And other locations also have their signs. For example, to go to Halakbat, I point all of my fingers out. Then they know it's, it's Halakbat. So that means me as a passenger or a customer, I'm the one who's telling the driver where to take me. The same applies to network applications. For example, if I want to access my emails on Gmail, my, appli my application will make sure it notifies the transport layer of my intentions. Meaning when I type Gmail on my URL and I want to open my emails, the application layer will pass the session to transport layer. And transport layer will know which port to give me. Since I'll be trying to access my emails, the transport layer will give me a destination port of port 25, which is used for simple mail transfer protocol, SMTP, and will assign me a source port within the registered port scope or within the dynamic port scope. And let's say while at it, I want to check Cisco website. My application layer will inform the transport layer of my intentions. And the transport layer seeing that I want to check a website will assign me port 80 for my destination port. And my source port will be assigned from the registered port scope or the dynamic scope. A client or, or a host is able to do what we call multiplexing sessions. Session multiplexing is when a client opens more than one session at a time, meaning one IP address can have more than one session at a time. And port numbers are used to deliver information or the data to the right session. Earlier I talked about two protocols that we have on transport layer. Being TCP, which is the reliable one, and UDP, which is the unreliable one. How is it unreliable? UDP is unreliable in that it expects the application layer to give it information that is working. It just wants to transfer the information from the application layer to the following layer. It doesn't want to check what's happening within, within that data or within that information. It also doesn't establish a communication session between the resource host and the destination host. It's used for things like video streaming, online gaming, and voice over IP. Things like that, there's no time for us to wait for the information or packets to be retransmitted. If, if a packet or a frame is lost, then we won't get it. For example, if you are playing online game or you are watching a video streaming, when the pixels become blurred, 
meaning we have bad pi pixels. Our series or our online games doesn't decide to stop and wait for the pixels to be to recover to become good. It carries on with those bad pixels and it will recover while the session is still going on. TCP being the reliable one, it establishes communication by using three way handshake. How does it happen? This is how it happens. Let me just wipe this place so that I can make an example of three way handshake. On three way, three way handshake, what happens? Let's say here we have our connection requester and we have our receiver. These are our hosts. Our connection requester will send a synchronization segment to our receiver, which will include things like destination port, source port, and initial sequence number. So our requester, connection requester, send a synchronization. That's our first step on our three-way handshake. Our receiver, when it gets this synchronization, it sends back what we call synchronization acknowledgement, which include the expected sequence number from the sender. So it will send what we call synchronization acknowledgement. That's the second step of the three-way handshake. Last but not least, our connection requester or the sender will send acknowledgement to the receiver and that will complete our three-way handshake and the two devices can start communicating or sending packets back and forth. It will send what we call acknowledgement. That's the last step to our three-way handshake. And then from there you can start communicating. TCP also include what we call windowing mechanism to the flow control. Windowing mechanism is used to advertise the amount of information that the receiver can receive or is able to process at a time. Meaning, windowing is used maybe to increase the window size or decrease the window size according to the resources of the receiver. It's used with acknowledgement segments or acknowledgement numbers to run the TCP communication. When a connection requester or a sender sends targets, it waits for a time to receive an acknowledgement so that it can carry on to send another packet. TCP receives a chunk of data from application layer and then segments it into smaller segments so that it can transfer those segments to the desired destination. For example, let's say our three-way handshake is already been done. The establishment of 
that connection is already been done. So let's say our sender or our transmitter transmits three packets, packet one, two, and packet three to our receiver. Meaning it sends sequence number three to the receiver. The receiver, when it receives sequence number three, it will acknowledge by sending the number that is, that is expected. For example, let's say it's able to process all these three packets. It will send acknowledgement act, act number four. Meaning, I'm waiting for number four. And then it will send its sequence. Let's say it sequence it sequence 10. Act four, sequence 10. When the sender gets this act four, sequence 10, it will send its packet. Let's say for now it sends. Four more packets, meaning it's in sequence four, five, six, and it increases the window, make it four packets. It says ARC 11, meaning I'm waiting for your 11, and I'm sending you sequence number seven. There it goes, our receiver. Let's say, for interest sake, it has a bit of a congestion. So it doesn't receive sequence number seven. It receives sequence number four, five, and six. It will answer by sending or transmitting ARC seven. Meaning, I'm waiting for packet number seven so, or send packet number seven and my sequence the one that I am sending is that eleven that the transmitter requested for example so when it sends when it sends this information to our transmitter, our transmitter will already know, okay, actually need my sequence number seven. It has been dropped. So I need to retransmit packet number seven. So maybe it will send seven, eight, and nine. So it will say sequence number nine, act 12. And so on and so forth. And that's how it take the communication take place. That's how it knows when to reduce the window size and when to increase the window size. I hope this has been informative and I hope you really enjoyed the information that you got and you are taking notes so that you don't just get this information but you also learn this information for future purposes. Please give, leave comments and subscribe so that we can grow and get motivation for what we are doing. Whether be bad comments or good comments, they are appreciated. Comments are what build us and make, makes us who we are or who we want to be in the future. Last but not least, I want to wish you all the best in your future endeavors and enjoy your day. Have a blessed one. Thank you.